Oh, the man, uh, where is it? Uh, where's, where, where's my air horn spray? Ah, oh, you know what? It's time for some entertainment news! Yo, what is up, guys, and welcome back to McGady's Entertainment. I'm your host, as always, Adam McGady. Got some exciting video game and movie news for you guys today, and one of the first things I want to talk about is something that I feel like hasn't been getting a whole lot of press just yet on social media. Maybe it's not too important, but um, it has to do with the new Joker movie that's coming out. Now, everybody knows that one of Batman's greatest enemies is the Joker, and of course he's getting his own upcoming movie on October 4th, and just a couple months ago, it was officially announced that Robert Pattinson, the former Twilight star, is going to be playing the new Batman. And in a recent interview, Robert Pattinson may have just revealed that there may be some plans in the future for Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and his Batman to have some future interactions. Okay, so I was browsing online for some articles about the new Joker movie, and I came across this one today on IndieWire. And it, uh, the headline is that Robert Pattinson is sparking a theory that his Batman will cross over with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And so basically what this article is saying is that Robert Pattinson had a variety cover story that's talking about his thoughts on becoming Batman, Bruce Wayne. But um, later on in the interview, um, he was asked about the Joker and he started to talk about it. And he actually kind of retracted and kind of pulled back a bit. And he said that he's not used to thinking about spoilers. And he goes on in the interview to say that he's really um, typically used to doing art house style films. And he's not used to not being able to talk about the future of his movies freely because he's never sure if he's going to spoil anything. And so because of this, this is causing some people to theorize that his Batman may have some potential run-ins with this Joker. And so I know that the DC has confirmed that Joaquin Phoenix's Joker actually exists outside of the DCEU. So you won't see this Joker in movies like Justice League or anything like that. But um, no one is for sure if Robert Pattinson's Batman exists inside the DCEU either. What would be really cool is if, honestly, both of these characters kind of exist in their own universe and you don't really have to worry about tie-ins with Justice League, with Superman, Wonder Woman, or Aquaman, or any of that, that honestly you just kind of build up your own Batman universe and just let that exist in itself. Because honestly, that's what made movies like The Dark Knight so good. Um, because it was just all about Batman and the characters in his universe. And honestly, um, I think this would be a return to form to something like that. It would be totally nostalgic, and it would be honestly different from what Marvel is doing. I mean, that's what DC's been trying to do for so long. And if, honestly, if they don't worry about the big team-up movies and just kind of just focus solely on their individual heroes, I think that would be a really good formula for them to follow, because, I mean, it worked for the Christian Bale Batman series. Why can't it work for Robert Pattinson? Um, this could mean nothing, but it also could mean a lot of things. Very excited about the potential of this. I've also been noticing that the Joker movie has been getting nearly perfect reviews from just about every source who has seen it so far. Um, I mean, I know you can't really take them seriously for movie reviews, but um, IGN gave them a 10 out of 10, and uh, which is something they hardly ever do for movies or for video games. And when they do, I mean, uh, it, it typically deserves it. And so, I mean, that has me very excited. Um, I believe Forbes gave it a perfect review. I believe Variety gave it a perfect review as well. And I was also seeing some articles online that at the um, theatrical premiere in Venice, the movie got an eight-minute standing ovation. Now, I'm a big fan of superheroes. I've been reading comics ever since I was a little kid. But uh, I will never stand for a movie and clap for eight minutes, no matter how good it is. I mean, uh, that's a little much. And honestly, the lowest review I have seen for the movie so far has come from Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I mean, the, the rivalry between Rotten Tomatoes and DC continues. For those of you who don't know, um, a lot of DC Comics fans think that Rotten Tomatoes has uh, some kind of personal vendetta against DC movies because they just have this uh, habit of rating Marvel movies uh, extra high no matter how good or bad the fans think it is. And uh, they always tend to um, rate DC movies on the lower scale. But... Um, even in this instance, I mean, it's the lowest rating out of the other critics I've seen, but 
the Rotten Tomatoes gave Joker an 85%, which is still certified fresh. I mean, that's still a very, very good review to have from that source. And I mean, you can't take that as your personal uh, the source of m movie news or reviews. I mean, just go see a movie for yourself and formulate your own opinions. Don't let a critic shape what you think a movie should be. But um, regardless, still, I mean, that's a very good review. Uh, and then combined with all the other positive reviews, I mean, it's shaping up to, see, to pretty much guarantee that you should go see this movie. And parents, just a warning before you take your kids with you to go see Joker, please know that the movie will indeed be rated R, probably for strong violence and language. So um, if you're um, contemplating taking them with you, I just wanted that as a warning just before you go see it. So with the potential of Robert Pattinson's Batman meeting Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and the overwhelming positive reviews that Joker is getting, I'm very excited about the uh, future of DC movies. I'm actually very excited for Robert Pattinson as Batman too. I know a lot of people um, had a lot of problems with that, but I'll tell you this. I was super skeptical when I first heard that Ben Affleck was cast as Batman back when Batman vs. Superman was even first announced. Um, but then when I saw the movie, I was completely blown away by how good he was as Batman. Um, he was super intimidating, uh, super charismatic, and I just thought he was an overall good Batman. I love the Christian Bale movies, but unpopular opinion. Ben Affleck is my favorite Batman. I hated how they treated him in Justice League. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Snyder Cut eventually, if it ever happens, to see the true portrayal of Batman in that movie. And um, if Ben Affleck ever decides to come back to do one last fling as Batman, that would just, that would just please my little heart. <laughs> oh, so much. And speaking of the Snyder Cut of Justice League, there is a super fan who is super hard at work at creating his own version of the Snyder Cut of Justice League, and his channel is called Black Suit Edition, and he actually just put out a new clip a couple days ago called The Bunker, which is his own edit of, this, of the nightmare scene in Batman vs. Superman, where it shows this uh, his own version of The Flash coming through Batman's memory to come and save him from Superman, and it's, used, and it's using a cut of Ezra Miller from a different movie, and even just the way he edits it is just really, really cool. And what he's leading up to is his own overall cut of Justice League using the original dark color palette that Zack Snyder originally wanted to use for the movie. And even he, frame by frame, he's coloring Superman's suit to be the black and gray suit like he had when he initially came back from the dead in the comics that a lot of fans thought he was going to wear in the movie when he came back to life in Justice League. So I'm very excited for this. Um, you can definitely tell his editing skills are top notch, way better than my uh, my quick edits that I use. And once his uh, version of the movie is released, I can't wait to check it out. And so be sure to check out his channel, uh, Black Suit Edition, and check out that recent video. Um, I'll leave the link to it in the, uh, in the description below. So yeah, that will do it for movie news for today. A, a lot of DC stuff, again, I, I, I love my DC movies. Um, what are you most excited for with upcoming DC projects? Um, whether that be Joker, Batman, I know the new Harley Quinn Birds of Prey movie is coming out. There's a new Wonder Woman movie coming out as well. Aquaman 2 is being um, worked on. Uh, what are you most excited for? Be sure to let me know in the link below. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe as well. And be sure to smash that bell so you're also notified of when all my new upcoming videos are coming out. And in the realm of video game news today, um, something I'm very excited about that my friend Tim actually directed me onto was that uh, former wrestler and current Marvel movie star Dave Bautista is going to be starring in the new Gears of War game on Xbox. Um, now, I I think I've only played a Gears of War game once, but whenever I'd see the advertisements for the game, I would always think that Bautista looked like someone that should be in that game and I'm apparently not alone with that because now he he's he's in the game I mean there he is right there and he looks just like a character from the game I mean he's jacked he's got the shaved buzz cut and everything too I mean uh, he looks like he just stepped out of the game and came into real life when it's the the other way around now all I got to do is put Terry Crews on there and uh, I think everyone's dream will come true all right guys so that'll do it today for this episode of entertainment news Thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe, and be sure to smash that bell below to get all the notifications for all my latest videos. You guys have been awesome. My name is Adam McGahey with McGahey's Entertainment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Catch you later.